Hi everybody, Pastor Cliff here, at Grace Community Church in Surprise, Arizona. I hope you're enjoying a warm, sunny day wherever you may be tuning in from. I am so glad that you could join us for this this uh, last section of Chapter Eight of the Gospel of John. We've been plowing through, trying to do this as as uh, thoughtfully as we possibly can. There is so much here in this gospel. Now, I'm a garden variety pastor. I'm just your average kind of guy. I'm not a theologian, uh, I'm not a Bible scholar, but I will say I love to study God's Word and I love to find out what's in it, and I hope you do too. So as we study, um, we just ask you, O oh Lord Jesus, to bless our time together, that you would be speaking to our hearts and our minds and helping us through your Spirit to understand what is in your Word um, so that we would bless and honor you all the days of our lives. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, okay, friends, we are here at the last section of the uh, of chapter 8 of the Gospel of John, and we're going to go ahead and read through this first section together, um, and then we'll go through verse by verse. Remember that we're in this really, really Oh, almost a painful back and forth between Jesus and the Jewish leaders, and they are at each other's throats. In fact, some of them had been believing him, and now they're turning against him, and we have this uh, amazing conversation going on. So the Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Now remember, all of this flows from the last section we just studied. Uh, in fact, they, the two sections could be together. Uh, let me read that again. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? And Jesus answered, I don't have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died as, as, he, as did the prophets, yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will, never see, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets died? <laughs> who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say, he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do not know him, and I keep, or I'm sorry, I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You're not yet 50 years old, and you've seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Whew. There you have it, gang. Ain't a lot of stuff going on here. So the Jews answered Jesus um, and uh, said, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Okay, remember... Uh, uh, Jesus has said that they're the, their father is the father of lies. Uh, basically, their, their father is Satan. And, um, uh, and, and so um, he says in verse 47, whoever is of God hears the words of God. Uh, the reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. He, so he's telling this, the Jewish leaders to their faces, you're not of God. These are the high and mighty ones. These are the scribes, the Pharisees. These are the ones who are the highest and the best of Israel, not the lowest and the least. These people have an education. These people have a reputation. These people have wealth and power. These people are the ones who everybody's supposed to look up to. These are the ones who, you're, who are supposed to follow. And now Jesus is saying, you don't even know God. Whew. You're not even of God. Even worse. So the Jews answer him, are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Now, let me tell you, friends, that may not sound much to our 20th century ears, but let this, our modern ears have got to understand that when they say you're a Samaritan, 
they're talking to, they, they are, this is a slur. This is a slur against Jesus. Why? Because Samaria was off limits. Why? Because Samaria, north of Jerusalem, north of Judea, um, was uh, a, an area uh, where the Jews had basically taken God's word and twisted it. They discarded many of the books of the Old Testament. They basically come up with a religion of their own. They even, wow, they even herded and ate pigs up there. So this is an unclean land, and you weren't to go anywhere near Samaritans. In fact, people would literally walk all the way around Samaria to go farther north because they didn't want to be declared unclean. Jesus, he just went right on in. He wasn't worried about the the cleanliness laws. I mean, so what if I, I, I touch something that touched a Samaritan? So what? He went and talked to the woman at the well. Remember that? They had uh, even established a, a temple on Mount Gerizim uh, near Shechem. And uh, so... There was a lot of animosity, and they were they, they were saying a, that calling Jesus a Samaritan was a, a horrendous charge. But even worse, they turn right around and they say, "You have a demon." In other words, you're from hell. So <laughs> he's kind of going, oh, "Wow, okay." So Jesus answered them, "I don't have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me." So in other words, he's saying, "Look." I'm from, I am from the Father. I come from the Father. Remember the law of primogeniture. He, he's the firstborn, okay? He is the one who is the, the true older brother, so to speak. He represents uh, the Father in uh, business transactions. In the law of primogeniture, you'd have a, probably a signet ring. Um, you would have, be able to, that would have the seal of the Father on it. You would represent him in business uh, dealings. Your word was his word. Um, and, uh, and so this is what Jesus is claiming. Nobody claimed this kind of the, the thing that, that you could be from the, uh, I mean, that you were, were, would be this close, this intimate with the Father. This is stunning to people. And um, he goes on to say, yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. He's the Father. So the Father glorifies the Son, and that's the first little piece that uh, we need to take note of. Um, uh, or, I'm sorry, the Son, rather, glorifies uh, um, the, the Father. That's, that's essentially what is being said here. Uh, and then let's read on verse 51. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word... He will never see death. This is a staggering claim. What do you mean? You can reverse the effects of the fall? Who are you to say that you could... <sighs> Jesus, you're, you're, you've really overstepped your bounds now. You've gone far beyond your limits. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died as, his, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. <laughs> That's insane, Jesus. What are, you, what are you saying? Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? Oh. Okay, remember, this is the thread. The, Abraham's a common thread that, through this whole conversation from verse 31 on uh, all the way to the end of the chapter. They, they, uh, they are claiming the bloodline of Abraham and... Um, uh, and, and he's their father, um, and, and they're saying, look, he died, and you're saying they're, you're greater than him? You can reverse the effects of death? And the prophets, too, who died? Who do you make yourself to be out to be? Who, who died and made you king? Who, <laughs> who do you make yourself out to be? And Jesus answered, look, I glorify my, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It's, it's my father who glorifies me. So earlier he says, basically, I glorify my father, but now he's saying, uh, it's my Father who glorifies me. Remember, we've got the hypostasis. The Father and I are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Um, the whole, this whole aspect of the Trinity, the hypostasis, is very important, friends. And to my Mormon friends out there and to my Jehovah Witness friends out there, uh-uh, don't you dare take this kind of language out of your Bibles. Don't you dare ignore the Trinitarian language. Oh, but the word Trinity isn't mentioned about. That's not the point, friends. The concepts are there 
throughout the Gospel of John over and over and over. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three and one, the one and three. All right. Now that I got that out of my system, um, uh, Jesus is not seeking to glorify himself. Um, he is, um, it's the, it is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known, you have not known him. So in other words, they're claiming that he's their God. Jesus says, you don't even know him. I know him. If if I were to say that I do not know him, uh, I would be a liar like you. See, this is the whole thing. Who's right? Who's wrong? Is it Jesus or is it the, the uh, Pharisees, the scribes of Pharisees, the leaders in the temple, the Sanhedrin? Who is, who's got the truth here? Um, but you have not known him, says Jesus, verse 55. I know him. Oh, I just read that, didn't I? If I were to say that, I, I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Okay. So remember, Jesus is always listening to the Father. And whatever the Father tells him to do, I mean, he's, he does what the Father says. And he doesn't do anything that the Father doesn't tell him to do. He's on, he's coming, he's come uh, with a message um, from the Father. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. In other words, Abraham uh, knew that there would be a Messiah coming. And there are any number of places that we could look to uh, to speak to this. Uh, but in a broad and general sense, Abraham understood that there would be a Messiah one day. Uh, in, in fact, the birth of his son Isaac was, and, and, and uh, the whole scene on uh, Mount Moriah with uh, uh, the sacrifice uh, or, or the, uh, what could have been the sacrifice of Isaac, that was a foreshadowing of the coming Messiah. Um, Jesus says, Abraham saw it and he was glad. So the Jews said to him, you're not 50, yet 50 years old, yet you've seen Abraham? Yeah, yeah, that's what Jesus is saying. I've seen Abraham. <laughs> and then Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Oh, shocking. So, again, keep in mind, when Jesus says, truly, truly, and he uses this like 20 plus times in the whole Gospel of John. When Jesus says, truly, truly, he is underscoring it. He's highlighting it. He's saying this is absolute truth. And then he says, before Abraham was, before Abraham was even born, I am. What's that mean? That's that old ego eimi in the Greek phrase, okay? Ego eimi is, uh, the, are the Greek words that we find in the Septuagint that describe, uh, the, that used for God, God's name, in the uh, burning bush, the whole scene be with Moses in the burning bush, if you remember that, God spoke out of, Moses said, who shall I say sent me? And God says, ego emi, I am sent you. And so uh, this is utter blasphemy. The Jews absolutely interpret this as Jesus claiming to be God. And uh, this is, this is, horrifying to their ears and so they picked up stones to throw at him why because this is blasphemy this is according to them they they were hearing jesus commit blasphemy here but jesus hid himself and went out of the temple what he hid himself and went out of the temple here he is he's in front of all these people he's making how how can he get away well let me tell you friends you have to remember that jesus um, was not bound by human time. He, uh, the mob was not going to be victorious over him. They weren't going to force him to uh, be stoned. Besides, Jesus was, uh, Jesus was very clear of, as to how he was going to die. He would be lifted up. He wouldn't be cast down. And that when you stone someone, you have to be cast down. Um, but this was all in his timing. Remember in the first half of the book of John, the Gospel of John, you have um, the book of signs, all these miracles that point to Jesus as the fulfillment of, uh, of messianic prophecy in the Old Testament. And um, 
So you have all these signs that, that Jesus performs. And um, that's the first half, right up to chapter 13. Up until then, Jesus says, my time has not yet come. My time has not yet come. Then he's betrayed in chapter 13 by Judas. And suddenly his time has come. And he goes up, 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 up to Jerusalem, up to Golgotha, up to the cross, up to the skies, ascension, up to the heavens. Um, and he's glorified. Remember the book of glory, second half of the book uh, of or the gospel of John. First half of the gospel of John, book of signs. Second half of the gospel of John, book of glory. It's the last week of Jesus's life. And, um, and so uh, this is how he's glorified. He's glorified on the cross. The father uh, glorifies him uh, because Jesus, Jesus uh, uh, fulfills this mission to the salvation of our souls. He's glorified in that we, he has accomplished it. It is accomplished. It is finished. To tell us die. It's done. Our salvation is won. Hallelujah. Glory to be to God. And so um, we have uh, Jesus uh, not going to the cross or not going to death on anybody else's timetable but his own. He's God. He's got a, a, a horrible mission to have to go to the cross, but a glorious mission in the end when he is obedient to the Father. Not my will, but thy will, O Father. Um, and, and he uh, went to the cross to pay the price for your sins and mine. Let me tell you, friends, this is a beautiful thing. If Jesus truly uh, rose from the dead, it makes all the difference. And it's, he himself fulfilled his very own words that uh, um, uh, he wouldn't taste death. Um, and, of course, you know, there's a whole lot more to that. But um, Christ himself rose from the dead, uh, showing, in essence, that you and I have a path there. He's saying, you don't have to taste death either. Oh, yes, in an earthly sense. Uh, you you may suffer, you may die. Most of us will, I suppose, before the second coming. Um, but no matter where we are in life, we will ultimately at one point taste death and probably be pushing up daisies at some point in time. But we can trust the one who says, look, the grave is not the end. The grave is not the end. You will be raised from the dead. You will rise from the dead. There is a resurrection for you. Put your hope and faith in me. Jesus doesn't tell us to, to go out and run around and do all kinds of good works to earn our salvation. No, he says, it's, it's, it's my blood on the cross that saves you. What does Paul say? It's by grace through faith uh, that, that we're saved. Otherwise, we'd be running around boasting, wouldn't we? we oh, look at all the good works I did. I'm going to get into heaven. Ha, da, 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 da. Well, no, friends. Um, it's based on the blood of Christ, the grace of Christ, his work on the cross, uh, and, and our believing in it, our faith, our, our faith in that, in Jesus Christ, that we will be saved. And uh, it changes everything, changes my whole, changed my whole outlook on life. This is not the end. If this was it, oh my goodness, look at this dark world. What a mess. But man, I have the hope of the resurrection, and I, I hope you do too. If you haven't given your heart to Jesus Christ, oh friend, I hope you do, because you're leading a hopeless life otherwise. What, is, what does it profit a man? What does it profit a person if you gain the whole world but lose your eternal soul? In the end, doesn't what doesn't matter? It doesn't matter whether you've got pride, position, possessions, a house, a fancy car, um, uh, lots of money, whatever it is, that stuff is meaningless. If you don't have your own soul, if you don't have salvation, and Jesus offers that to you and to me freely. So if you haven't given your heart to, to Jesus yet, I hope you do right now. Lord Jesus, I pray for my friends who've been watching that you would be speaking to their hearts, 
that you would fill them with the, the joy of salvation, that they would turn their lives over to you if they haven't already, and that you would highlight in their hearts and minds the, the beauty and the love that you have for, the, the, the beautiful love, rather, that you have for them, and that uh, the, the hope uh, that we've, we find in the work of Christ on the cross is available to all, and that hope is an eternal hope, um, that life does not end with a grave, but goes on for eternity beyond that in glorious relationship with the living God. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that we pray these things. Amen. Well, all right, friends, there you have it. Um, uh, keep in mind, I, I did miss this p little point, little point, um, that Jesus had, because Jesus was God, um, Remember John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. In other words, the Word being Jesus was all the way back in the beginning. And, um, and so Jesus is saying, Look, I was, I was around before Abraham even came onto the scene. I was, I was there when he was born. I was there when he died. I know Abraham. I know him well, <laughs> just like he knows us better than we know ourselves. Well, anyway, we could go on about this, but I sure do love you, and I look forward to hearing from you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your computer screen and ring the bell if you liked what you heard. In the meantime, uh, I would just pray that you keep your eyes on the skies, keep your eyes fixed upon Jesus until we meet again. Bye-bye.